I'm in beautiful Queensland to introduce this inspiring plant to power Australia with 100% renewable energy within the next 10 years. We're talking baseload renewable energy supplied around the clock, 24 hours a day by the sun and wind. Our two biggest renewable assets here in Australia. This blueprint plan utilises international knowledge and experience using already proven solar thermal and wind technologies available right now. It's detailed, costed and ready to implement. Australia has a decision to make. Whether to continue with 19th century fossil fuel technologies or become part of the 21st century global renewable energy boom. The boldness and ambition of this plan has attracted over 100 volunteer engineers and scientists to work on it for free. They're smart, dedicated people with the right practical experience and know-how. The plan has also received the backing of some very high-profile Australians. What unites them is a desire for more practical planning like this and ultimately Australia's transition to a 100% renewable economy. There's a few really inspiring things about this plan. One is it was put together essentially on a voluntary basis without government money being involved and without any lobby groups being involved. It shows that we can be carbon neutral in 10 years and I think it would inspire other nations uh, to move forward. There's no doubt that every country is looking at every other to see who's going to go first. It just so happens we're very blessed in terms of renewable energy, the costs are relatively low for us, and we could very easily be a, a global first mover setting such a, a high target. I want to congratulate Matthew and all the authors and collaborators on this report. This is a fantastic piece of work. Our response to climate change must be guided by science. The science tells us that we have already exceeded the safe upper limit for atmospheric carbon dioxide. We are, as humans, conducting a massive science experiment with this planet. It's the only planet we've got. I think it has a lot of mainstream appeal even though it's a fairly technical report um, because it's something that, that it concerns everyone. Um, it's, it's everyone's world and it's everyone's environment so you sit there and you, and you get told one thing by your politicians and your coal lobbyists about how the world should run um, and we're giving an alternative view to that so it's not just about the technical nature of the report but it's also giving an enlightenment of, of a different way in which we should run our sort of our country or run our energy resources um, not just based on, on technical views but on, on it gives sort of hope and enlightenment into, into a different way in which we can turn on our power that is actually quite affordable for, for everyday people. This work is important for Australia in a number of respects. Someone has to level with the Australian public as to what it will cost, whether these costs are bearable, and this report does exactly that. What I'm thinking about is my children and my grandchildren who are going to be living in a very different world where climate change has to be taken very seriously. Therefore it's heartening to me as a grandfather to have a plan like this that simply plainly says this can be done. I found it great to read the Zero Carbon Energy Australia plan because it lays out a strategy for generating electricity which is central to all our lives. Australia has enormous advantages because of the great land mass, the enormous amount of solar energy that comes in and the availability of wind power and uh, we don't need to uh, run that through fossil fuels that were laid down 300 million years ago. We can do that right now in real time. The thing that we've all worried about with solar thermal power, of course, is that the sun doesn't shine all the time. So what happens when there's no sun? Obviously at night, which is when we have our peak power load. 
The solution to that has been found. You use the heat of the sun during the day when it's sunny to heat molten salt. And then that hot molten salt is used to generate heat, or provides the heat uh, to make steam, which drives electricity generation. We dismantled the industrial base that made horse-drawn carriages. We no longer rely on the horse as our major means of transport. We do change, and we have to change. New facts on climate are constantly emerging, and we, the public, are rightly debating the issue. But regardless of how this conversation evolves, it's clear that taking a risk management approach to climate change is the best way to tackle the issue. The Zero Carbon Australia project is producing shovel-ready plans to fully decarbonise our economy. It shows that baseload energy can be supplied from renewable sources. It's well within the capacity of the Australian economy to move to 100% renewable energy within a decade and it's affordable at around $8 per household per week. It's the best safeguard against the environmental and economic risks of doing nothing or doing too little too late. The idea of a zero carbon Australia inspires me and if it inspires you to join us and get involved. Donate to the plan and help us produce them. We're actively seeking technical volunteers as well as people to help spread the word. Simply visit zerocarbonplan.org to find out more.